cataractcoach.com. Direct electomy assisted with a proline suture. Using that suture to prevent fibrosis and ensure a good bleb outcome here. So the path is limbal based with three interoscleral pads, one on each side of the trabeculectomy flap and parallel to the limbus, perpendicular to the scleral flap, and a superior one at the level of the tendons insertion of the superior rectus in the form of a loop, kind of an omega shape, with an interoscleral path of about two millimeters. The rest of the suture remains free in the subcontinental space and below the trabeculectomy flap. That's what prevents the fibrosis. All of the steps of the surgery are the same as previously described, and just making sure you have a good closure of the conjunctiva so it's completely watertight. Let's take a look at the surgery in action here. So our authors are now using a needle here to create a little bit of a pocket on either side of that scleral flap. So you see the scleral flap for the trabeculectomy. So on the other side again, now putting a hollow bore needle there and creating a little path. And then through this, going to feed it in a protein suture here. So feeding in this protein suture, pulling it out the other side. And again, here's the other path at the insertion of the superior rectus. And that'll go through. And then finally, the other side of the trabeculectomy flap. And then once that's done, you feed the suture through, you'll see it lays down in a shape of kind of like an upside down omega, uh, letter omega, Greek letter. So pulling this through here, there you go. There's the, the flap. Using a little cautery here to create some flanges. Get those flanges pushed into those pockets so they're not exposed. There you go. And now let's see another technique. So similarly, making a scleral flap here. Here now is bending a needle to create a little bit of a pocket on either side. And now here is the proline suture already just on the needle. So probably an easy way of doing it. So passing that through and you can cut the suture, cauterize the ends, tuck that knot in. And this omega shape here basically is going to prevent any scarring. So it'll prevent that flap from sealing all the way down and, and, and closing up. And here at the end, a, a closure of the conjunctiva. It looks pretty good. And let's watch here another one. So the authors have a good experience with this, with many patients. This has been previously published in the um, literature in their home country. And so here you go. In the last two years, they have more than 40 surgeries. And at six of them, they modify the technique for the treatment of neovascular glioma. And in order to divert angiogenesis factors to the posterior subtenon space. And so in this one, there's the 5-0 proline. It's passed like the others. But then now it's going behind that superior rectus muscle. And so now on the other side of the flap for the trabeculectomy, and then again, making the flanges on the ends, getting those buried within the um, scleral flaps there, the little pockets. And then here you go. There's the suture. You can see in the post-op period, it creates a nice diffuse blab and helps prevent any scarring. So I thought that was a very interesting surgery. So leave a comment below if you think so also. Remember, check out our podcast every week, a brand new podcast. Such an amazing way to learn so much about ophthalmology.